Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chung here again. So, lead code number 1998, GCD Sword of an Array. Okay, so this one is a very good problem. Okay, so you're given like integer array nums, and you can perform the following operation any number of times on numbers. Okay, basically, you can swap uh, two numbers if the GCD, right, is greater than one. Okay, so GCD is the greatest common divisor, right? And return true if it's possible to sort this array, otherwise false. Right? So for example, we have 7, 21, 3, right? So the answer is 3 because we can swap. We can swap 7 and 3, right? To get to get this one, and then we swap swap again to get this. Right? But for this example 2 here, the answer is false because for 5, we cannot sort it right we cannot sort it with any other element and plus you know since it cannot be sorted but five is not at the correct location right because you know even though let's say if the if we cannot sort of uh, swap five with any other but if it's if the five is at its correct correct location which is uh, the third one right which is like two six five two I guess this one should be okay Right, because even though five cannot be swapped with any other one, but as long as it's at its correct location, then it it's also fine, right? And then another one, okay, so the constraints is pretty standard, right? So and how do we solve this problem, right? I mean we have to start with this kind of G C G C uh D here, right? So this one I think this one is not that difficult to check, right? Basically which we need to find uh, if uh, we can just use like the the prime numbers, right, to find all the numbers that can be swapped, right, and another things we need to we need to notify to notice here is let's say a can be swapped is b, okay, and then a can also be swapped with c. Then what does it mean? It means that b can also swap with with c. Right, same thing for same thing for uh for other one. Let's say let's say B can be swapped with with D, okay, and this one can be also swapped. Then what does it mean? It means that C can also be swapped with D, right? So what do we have? We have a connected graph here, right? Okay, so basically, you know, anything any number in this connected graph, right? Component or component can be swapped swapped with each other, right? So what, what so what is this telling us? It's a union find, right? It's a union find problem, okay. And the last thing is that you know how how do we check, right? Basically, what we just sort these numbers, okay? We sort these numbers, uh, right? We have a sorted number, okay? So this it was sorted, okay? This is the original one. This is an uh, original one, okay. Right. So we compare the numbers one by one, right? If numbers are, are the same, then then it's fine because we don't have to deal we don't have we don't need to worry about this number, right? But if the number are different, then what do we check? We we simply just need to check if those two numbers are in the same component, which means which telling us if those two numbers are in the same components, then it means that okay, uh, those numbers can be swapped uh, freely, right? Yeah, it means that for example we have a sorted let's say it's four, right? And then here we have what we have like, uh, let's say ten, right? So we need four, but we have ten, right? Then it means that we we want to put a four here, right? But we have ten. Since four and ten are within the same component, for example, right? Uh, it's here. That's why you know. The, that's why we know we 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 can be sure that we can somehow right to swap to find a four right to swap it to to here to put it here, right? And then basically we check them one by one until there's no one there there's a one that cannot be swapped, right? And then we return false. Otherwise, if everything it's fine. It's, it's, it can be swapped or are or in the in the correct location. 
then we, we simply just return true in the end. Right, so that's the basic idea of this problem, right? And then the uh, the only thing left is how can we build this union find, right? Okay, so how can we build this union find? It means that you know any numbers that can that have the same uh, have a greater have the common GCD which is greater than one can be can be swapped interchangeable uh, can be swapped freely, right? And how do how can we check that, right? We have to use some like advanced uh, algorithm to check this one. There's a, there's one called Thief, right? So this Thief algorithm, this one is used to give us like uh, to find all the prime numbers, right? Within the range n, uh, within the range n, right? Within within the time complexity of o, uh, I think it's n log n, n log log n. I think that's the time complexity for the thief. Maybe I'll try to explain the, this time complexity later on. But we have this thief, right? Can can give us like a pretty a good uh, performance in regarding find out all the primes. And the reason we want to use this one is because we're gonna use the prime numbers, right? So prime numbers starting starting with with with, with two, right? And for each prime number. Right. Let's say we have, you know, for example, we have three and uh, uh, two. Let's say ten. This one, four and ten. This one can have the greatest common divisor of two, right? And how three and twenty twenty one. This one also have have three, right? So basically, you know, if we use the thief algorithm, right, and for the same for the same prime numbers, if we can find all the related uh, Related numbers that can that includes this this prime number, and then we know those two can be uh, can be swapped, right? Because if if the two numbers have the same common prime numbers, then we know okay. So at least uh, we have that uh, common uh, common divide uh, common divisor, right? For these two numbers, right? Since because that one is already since prime numbers is always greater than two. Right. That's why we can use this algorithm to find us. For example, for two, we can try to f a union all the numbers that has the prime number as two together, because we know all those numbers will have the will have a at least a common divisor at uh, which is at least two. Right. Yeah. So for example, we have this kind of two, right? So basically, the, the way the thief works is that you know, it's starting it starts from two, right? And basically, it, it checks the it checks the uh, the multiple of of twos because you know if two is a prime number, then you then it, what does it mean? It means that four is not a prime number, right? And eight is is not a prime number, and sixteen is not is not a prime number. Right, and then same thing for the uh, 30, 32 and six, 64. Oh, sorry, it's not okay. I'm sorry, it's it's not that like it's not like like that. Two, uh, six, right, and eight, uh, ten, twelve, uh, fourteen, sixteen, right. All these numbers, who has a step of two, are definitely not not prime numbers, right, because they can be a uh, Remember the definition of prime number is that the number can only be divided by the by the number itself and one, right? But with two, right? Since since we, we do a plus two plus two, which means all those numbers can can be can definitely be divided by two, which is wrong, right? So we, which is which which is violating with the definition of the prime numbers, right? And that's exactly what we we need in our algorithm, right? So if we pick it back on the thief algorithm, right? What does it mean? It means that you know. All those numbers, all those two, four, six, eight, ten, right, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, can be swapped inter, can be swapped because they have the common divisor, at least two, right. So, so that's basic. That's the basic idea, right? Okay, and let's start coding then, right? Uh. Okay. 
So uh, let's define a few stuff here. Uh, let's tr let's try to implement the save. Okay. Okay. So the save, how the save works is that we have a primes, right? Equals to this true uh, dot uh, max, right? So what what the max? The max is uh, we can either use ten to the power of five, or we can be a little bit smarter, which the max is going to be the max of nums plus one. Right, and then we have a so I'll tr I'll implement the the safe the standard safe algorithm, and then we need to do some modification on top of that. So the safe is like this. So we have a while p uh, times p smaller than max, right? And then here we have a p plus plus one. Okay, and inside the while we have we have these primes. If this one is is a p, okay, and then we mark. For i in range of p times p dot max, and then the step is p, right? If this one is like uh, for uh, for all the numbers, basically the primes dot i is gonna be false. Okay, so that's the uh, the basic uh, safe algorithm, right? Um, yeah, so basically for each of the prime numbers, right, we find all its, uh, the, the prime numbers that's, uh, has a step, uh, inc has a step of P, right, we, we, we update all those numbers to false, because like I said, those numbers will definitely be, be, uh, be, be non-prime numbers, right. And here is like the while loop here, right? So um, there's some like improvements. The reason we stop at square root of, of n here, right? So what does it mean? It means that p stop at square root, root of n, right? It's because uh, we don't have to loop through everything, right? Yeah, we don't, we don't need to loop through every, everything. Uh, we can stop at n, and he, same thing for this one. I think for this one, I think either like p, you know, either p or p square is it's they would they should also work. Oh, I think probably p p p should not work because we cannot start from p because p is a prime, right? That's why you know the uh, the square root of p is, is our starting point. I think there's like a proof of of that. Uh, you know, for example, right, so like, let's say p is 7, you know, we have 7. Let's say p is equal to 7, right? p is equal to 7, so why do we start from like this one? This, uh, p will start from 49, right? But like I said, you know, from, from 7, we have 14, we have 21, we have 28, we have 35, right? So all these numbers, basically, we're, 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 we, we, have, we are skipping those numbers, right? And we are... But and we we start from forty nine and why is that? This is because all those numbers, they have already been marked to be num prime, with a smaller number with a smaller prime number. See, so for fourteen, this one is it's not a it's has has already been updated with a prime number two. Okay, so twenty one had already been updated with prime number three. This one is also two. This one is what? This one is five. Right. So for this kind of those prime numbers, those numbers has already been had already been updated, and then that's why we start from forty nine. I mean, there is a proof of that, but that's that's what the basic uh, thief algorithm does. Okay, and in terms of the time complexity, right? So what do we have? Let's say we have n here, right? Uh, so the inner loop, right? So what does how many times does the inner loop do? Basically, this one is what. Let's say we have n, let's max equal to n here. We have a we have a n divided by i, right? So, uh, so basically, this one uh, we stop at n divided by i, right? And then, and then what? Then what is the for loop here? Basically, uh. This is the total number of loops we will be doing, right? For each of the, for e for each of, of the the p here, right? 
because with the step it step is p or step is i right and for everything that so what does this one do it this is like n times divided by by two right so that's the when i is equal when p is e, sorry when p is equal to to two right that's the that's the total number of loops of the inner loop and then about and then what n is divided by three right that's the second prime number and then what next one is n divided by by five right and then n divided by by seven right because we only go into the for loop when the prime when the p is a prime number right so on and so forth okay then what do we have here we have a n time times what uh this one plus one third plus one fifth plus one seventh right so on and so forth right And what what are those, right? Those are the reciprocals of the all the prime numbers, right? And what is the value of that? Uh, there's a log log n basically, right? Log log n, right? I know there <laughs> there is a proof for that, but I'm not going to go into details. But you guys can just remember that for the reciprocals of all the prime numbers, it's gonna be a log log n. So this n is the number of of the of this one here. It's not it's not this one. It's it's different, right? So keep in mind this n is is a max for for sure. And did this one? This one is what? This one is the, the total number of the of this uh reciprocals of the prime numbers. In our case it's what? Since we have the it's gonna be the outer loop, right? The outer loop is like what is if you think is a square root of n. That's why you know this one is gonna be a to be in our case instead of n this one should be a square square root of n right um, yeah and then we have an n at the very beginning. So that's how we, uh, th so that's the basic uh, time complexity for the for the Steve algorithm. And actually, this this log, you know, okay. So this log square root n is the same after log n. And why is that, right? Um, this is because you know, so we have a log uh, square root of n, right? So what does this one? What's this one? This one equals to what? This one equals to log log n divided by, by two. Right? So that's how we get this log. We can basically move this uh square root uh to the to the di 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 uh divider here, right? Below. That's why this one is similar since this two is like constant, and this one is actually essentially the same as the as the uh uh log n here, right? That's why the the total time complexity for the save algorithm is n times log log n, right? Okay, cool. So that's the basic, that's the save, right? But, you know, as you guys can see, uh, it's the, the standard save skips many, uh, skips some of the the numbers. But in our case, we, we cannot skip that. Okay. Uh, okay. For for example, the first thing is like this, right? For the the maximum is well, it's twenty one, right? So if we keep the while loop like this, right? Basically, we'll simply just uh, completely re uh, ignore seven, right? Because seven is like seven times seven is greater than the max, right? That's why. 7 will be ignored. That's why we will, we will not uh, process 7 and 21. Okay. So that's why, you know, for us, uh, I guess we should, we can remove this this part, right? We, we need to uh, check each number. Okay. And same thing for the inner loop here, right? So for the inner loop, we, 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 we should not start from P times P. We should also start with P itself. And let me see.
yeah, so, okay, but in that case, uh, let's, we need to do some union, right? Uh, let's define the union find function here, okay? Then let's let's define union find, okay? I will leave, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this one later, but now we need the union find. So we have find of x, right? And we have a union, union of x and y, right? And then for union find, uh, apparently we need a parent list, right? Parents, you know, before when we, when we do the union find, right, so the key will be the index and the value will also be the index, right? So that's why, you know, before we were using something like this, something like a range of of the of this n, right? Range of n, uh, and where n is the length of the numbers, right? Because we can use index to to know, right, if two numbers are are union together. But for this problem, it's a little bit it is a little bit different. We cannot in we, we we cannot use index. Instead, we need to use the number itself, because remember, when we do the comparison in the end, right? So what what are we checking? We're checking the number. We're checking the number of of it, right? Checking the number. That's why we have to use the number itself, or we can just do a, have like a map of from the number to its index, but but. Still, we cannot do it because uh, we could have duplicate numbers, right? That's why we cannot use index. Instead, we should use the number itself as the as a key for the parents. That's why we cannot use a list in this case. Instead, we should use like uh, a dictionary, right? And at the beginning, right, each number has its has uh, its parent equal to itself. There's going to be number, number, right? For num in nums, right? So that's the that's the definition of the parent. Now let's come back to this find that this is the template parent dot x does not equal to x, and then parent equals the find of parents of x, right? And then return parents of x. Yeah, I've already talked about this uh, union find implementation many times. Yeah, I would simply just uh, ignore this uh, explanation for this part. Yeah, and then for the find, we have r1 equals to find of x, right? We find the root for x, and then we find the root for for y. Okay, and we do the union whenever the r1 and the r2 is not the same, right? We do a parents of r2 equals r1. Okay, again, I'm speak skipping the the ranking parts here. Right. Okay, so now we have the union find, right? And now we can come back to union those numbers, right? Okay, so since we are like checking every numbers within the range, uh, we need to know if this number is is one of these numbers, and then we we just need to create a like number number set, right? So that we can get all all one time to check, right? Uh. Oh, by the way, you know, if we change change this one from p square to p to p here, it means that you know it'll break this primes uh, array here because you know, as you guys can see here, I think we start from p here. You know, the p itself when it it, it is true, but when the, after the first for loop, this p will become to false. But it's fine because um, we're not using these primes. In our in our in our algorithm solution here, we simply just piggyback on the thief here, right? Um, so we can ignore this part. Because and also, uh, if this one has already been set to false, it's fine because we're always keep moving forward, right? We we don't care. We don't care about the the numbers we have already uh, processed since we don't use these primes. Okay. And cool. So uh, that's why we have to do a check here. Basically, if uh, if i is in in the num of set, right? So if if i is in the okay, so basically we have two, four, six, uh, eight, and ten, right? So let's say uh, two, six, and ten; those are the numbers uh, we we have here. So how do we do the union of this of these three, right? Um, I mean. It's it's fine. We can always 
uh, union them with the with the first uh, number, or we can always union with with the previous one, right? Um, I think we can do something like this. So um, I think we need another one, like for this one equals to that. We need a, like a pre. We need a pre equals to zero. That's gonna be a the number we're going to union with, right? Um, if i is in the sum, then and then if the pre is greater than zero, right? And then we do a union uh, of i and the pre, right? And then here we can do a pre dot i, right? So it means that you know uh, we'll try to find the first number because if there's only one in if there's only one number, uh, there's no point of do the union of doing the union. But uh, here we're trying to fix two, right? And then for all the for all the others six and ten, we always union with two. Okay, so that's how we do it. And Cool. So, and after this save here, you know, all the uh, the numbers in our all the numbers who has the same uh, who who have the common uh, a divisor which is greater than one are all in the same group. Okay. So now we can just uh, let's try to call this save function first, and then we need to check. Oh, we need to like uh, sort it, right? So we need to sort it nums now, okay? To do the final check, right? It's gonna be sorted of numbers, right? So here we check if they're in the range of uh, length of nums, right? So if the find of nums i. If nums i basically uh, does not equal to nums uh, sorted, right? Sorted nums i and find, and those two are not in the same group, right? Right, so how do we check if they, those two are not, are not in the same group? We just do a find of those two numbers. If if they they're, they don't have the same uh, root, then they're not in the same group, right? And then we return false, okay? And then if everything works fine, return true. Okay, I think that's it, right? If I run it, okay. Yeah, there we go, right? So it passed. And so the time complexity, right? Um, like I said, like I already discussed a few times, so for union find, we're, we're treating this find and uh, union uh, both O1, right? With this path compression and with this, with this ranking. But I, I, like I said, I skipped this part, uh, ranking in the union part. So these two are union. And then we have, so here we have a, this is O of n, right? Because like I said, this is O of one, right? So that's why the total for this for loop is O of n. Uh, but we have O of uh, sorted here. We have sorted here. That's uh, this this unlock n basically unlock n. Okay. How about the thief here, right? So like I said, the thief has what has the unlock log n, right? Time complexity, which is uh which is uh, smaller than this unlock n. That's why. If for this problem, the time complexity is dominated by this sorting here, right? Which is unlocked. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah, as you guys can see, this one has a lot of uh, many, many small pieces, right? You need to know first as a prerequisite so that you can solve this problem. That's why this one is a hard one, right? So first, um, So first is that you know we need to understand right. So like I said, if A can be swapped with B and it can be swapped with C, right? And then B can also be swapped with with C. That's that's what makes us to uh, to think about a union find solution, right? So basically, if as long as we can find 
the groups for for all the numbers that can be swapped, then uh, we can just uh, do this in the end, right? Basically, we sort we if we compare with the target uh, nums and then we check numbers one by one, right? So first we check if if it's not in the in the correct position, and then if it's not in the same group, then it means that there's no way we we can bring that uh, expected number to this position. That's when we re return false, right? Otherwise, we keep going. And the last thing is that this th save here because that's how we can efficiently uh, do the union for all the uh, the numbers who have the common uh, common who have the common divisors. Right. Uh, cool. I think that's it for this problem. And thank you for watching this video, guys. Stay tuned again. Like. Bye-bye.